greetings everybody. I'm Father Mike. This is Elements of Faith. We are nearly through with our windows, but we've got a few more to go. And today I just wanted to briefly comment on this, probably one of the most well-known windows in our church and most well-loved, and it is the, the, the big one with the crucifix. Uh, but before I get to the crucifix piece, I'd like to start at the very top of this window, which tells the story from the book of Numbers, chapter 21. And you see there the, uh, this bronze serpent is, is put on a pole by God's command, such that all who look upon it are saved from the tribulation that was going on at the time. And, uh, and all those who looked upon this, this gold serpent on the pole this wooden pole were saved and which becomes kind of a huge foreshadowing right of of the crucifix a huge foreshadowing of our lord um, on the crucifix on the that kind of wood uh, the next if we go down a little bit here on the left hand side is the story of abraham and isaac and you remember the story of how Abram was taken. He took went up to the top of this mountain with his son Isaac, his tr only beloved son. And you remember how Abraham and Sarah had prayed and prayed and prayed for a son. And then finally, uh, just when they thought that was impossible, the Lord did give such a son and that his name was Isaac. And one day God says, hey, go up to the top of this mountain with your son and, and offer him to me, sacrifice him. And Abraham, Abram was very confused, and, but he was deeply faithful and obedient. So he climbs up this big mountain with his dearly beloved son, and he prepares to do just what God had commanded him. And uh, just and where they're walking up there, and, and Isaac says, well, I see the wood. I see, you know, the place where we're going to be the sacrifice, but where's the lamb? And Abram says, God himself will provide the lamb. Well, at every Mass, we say, Lamb of God, you take, Jesus becomes the Lamb, the only begotten Son of God the Father, sharing in His image and likeness and divinity uh, and fully human at the same time. And so that, that comment, who will provide the Lamb? God Himself will provide the Lamb. And then, and then Abraham, is Abram is prepared to off, make this offering and God says, don't you dare, because Jesus will be the lamb and Jesus becomes the lamb. And that's what we're going to, we're going to see a little bit further down on this big window. Uh, again, another foreshadowing, just like the book of Numbers of what is about to happen. Take a look next door on that other window on the right hand side. Um, we see the story of Samuel anointing David. Of course, David becomes the second king of the, of the uh, kingdom of Israel. And David, uh, it, it is in David's line that Jesus becomes the king. And so Jesus becomes the ultimate king. And um, we see that again as we scroll down into the bigger piece of this window above the cross, or on the cross above our Lord, I N R I, which, uh, in, according to the Gospel of John, was written in Greek, Hebrew, and Latin, um, which we would say a translation would be Jesus Christ, King of the Jews. And so Jesus becomes this full, the, the full King. And how does he obtain it? His his throne is the cross. And uh, so again, all three of these little pieces of the window down uh, on the top of this window are foreshadowing what happens with our Lord on the cross. Let's look now to that part. We see Jesus on this cross, Jesus on his throne, offering himself as the victim, offering himself as the king, offering himself as our brother, offering himself as our God, pouring out his life for you and me. And it's a beautiful window just to pass a little time just kind of looking at it and, and kind of remembering like as we look at it that we're below that cross. Uh, just as surely as we see these two figures here, Mary and John. John, the beloved apostle, the beloved disciple, 
who, uh, and, and again, this beautiful kind of moment with Jesus on, his, on that cross, and he says, I thirst, and he, his last words are totally beautiful. But then he looks at John, he says, behold your mother. And, and folks, that's you and me. We're, we are part of John. We are, we, John represents you and me. And he, Jesus looks from his throne, from his cross at you, and he says, behold your mother, treasure her, take her into your home, love her. And then he looks at Mary and he says, behold your son. And again, that's us. She's she, blessed mother wraps her mantle around us. She listens to the voice of her son and her God and says, and, and follows what that voice says, which is behold, behold your son, behold your daughter. That's us that blessed mother beholds, that she holds us in her arms, that she wraps her mantle around us all the time. We must never forget that. Uh, who else do we see? Just behind John, James, excuse me, behind John and Mary, we see Joseph of Arimathea, and we see Nicodemus. And these two individuals are uh, responsible for the, the kind of the, the oils and the laying in the tomb of our Lord. And, um, and so they're kind of standing there ready to, to do their part. Um, on the other side, we see Mary Magdalene. Pope Francis has a particular affection for Mary Magdalene and um, you know it's uh, that, that Mary is uh, one traditional title that you might see affixed to her is the kind of the apostle so to speak of the resurrection that she was the first one there uh, to to kind of witness uh, this beautiful event that had happened. Not that she actually saw it happen, but she gets to the empty tomb and she says, where'd it go? And then remember how Jesus is there and Jesus says, Mary. And at first, like, she doesn't realize, like, you know, that she thinks it might be the gardener or what's, what's going on, you know? And, and then Jesus calls her by name and says, Mary. And at that very moment, she knew. And so she becomes the the, the, the first witness of the resurrection, the first, and then she goes and she runs and she runs and she tells everybody. Uh, and, and it's the most beautiful kind of story that has come on down to us now through the years. Uh, as I stand underneath this window, I just kind of remember that, that I'm standing below Christ and that the blood, the water flowing from his pierced side comes upon me and it comes upon all of us. It falls into the chalices at Mass. It falls into the baptismal fa uh, founts that we are baptized into. And um, the, the, the salvation, the light of Christ, Christ is the light. You see that in this window, the light kind of just shining down on our Lord, who is the ultimate sun. And, and we, that, that same light, that same life falls upon you and me when we simply gaze upon that crucifix when we gaze upon our Lord just as this was foreshadowed on the top of this window in numbers whoever looked at that serpent on the pole was saved and folks when we look at our Lord and when we love our Lord as he asked to be known and loved and served then we we have that same life not just here on earth but forever in heaven so take some time especially this Lent to look upon this window and just get lost in wonder love and awe at what our Savior has done for us. God bless you.